Hey guys, Deepler. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Tier 6 French Cruiser, the Algerie. Uh, this Rue build, I didn't have him legendary when I shot this. I just took this photo when I, right before I recorded this. So keep that in mind. I mean, it shouldn't really affect the build in a large manner, but I do want to point that out just so you understand what we're looking at. This first match is kind of a more typical Elgery game, or at least how I would recommend playing the ship. The second match I got for you is more of a brawly, with brawly in quotes, <laughs> type of a match. Uh, that one ends up being a Kraken, so hopefully you enjoy these both. But the name of the game with this one is Long Range, Max Range. If you're not fighting at Max Range with this ship, you're going to have a hard time. Get a lot of feedback from people on the Discord or comments on the videos saying they either hate the ship or they're having a really hard time with it. I'm guessing the majority of the issues people are having is they're getting too close with it. Um, so just throughout these matches, or especially this first match, which is again how I would really recommend playing the ship, just keep a constant eye on that map and see where we're positioning ourselves because that's it's very deliberate. Being long range like this is going to give you time to dodge the shells. I have this set up with double steering gears. Uh, Rue is a defensive, you know, mobility type build. He does have ingenious on them or on the build, which allows me to know when I'm being targeted. All these things are going to increase your odds with the Algerie. This thing is not a ship that I find. Um, very easy to carry a match in. You're more of a annoyance, and if you're able to stay alive the entire match, that's when you can get some fairly decent numbers. But to be honest with you, the first 10, 15 games I played in this ship, I didn't play it very well either. You do need to get kind of a hang of it and stick with it, and once you really figure out what you're trying to do in this, that's when the numbers potentially can come. You'll notice a lot in this in these games, you can be flipping back and forth between the AP and the HE. You can see we'll be getting AP salvos, especially against cruisers, but broadside battleships is fine too. You're just going to want to typically aim up a little bit. Perhaps if you're le running Lemon uh, with his increased AP pen, or if you have like a Yamamoto build, you can be shooting more for citadels. But you can get, you know, 3 to 5k damage salvos with this AP even at range. So just be actively switching back and forth. Not a very quick reload. In fact, I think it's still the slowest at the tier. Let's see. Uh, 12 on my build. So it, it, it does pick up a little bit compared to some of the ships. But it's still not a very quick reload. That's kind of been a theme throughout the French line. I'll give you a little bit of a heads up on the Charles Motel. If you're getting frustrated with the ship and you're getting... Um, or... If you're getting frustrated with Algeria or the ships early in the line, the Charles Martel is a beast, and you can set it up in numerous different ways. But it's very likely the strongest um, tier 7 tier. You can definitely max out the DPM on that ship in a manner to make it extremely dangerous. Again, it's very squishy like this. But I'm just mentioning that. We'll cover the Charles Martel here in a couple days. But... I don't want people to get frustrated with this line prematurely because the end result is pretty impressive. Now here, why I'm pulling forward here when this Leon spotted me, or I was spotted by a plane, I was content to sit behind that island and just spam HE at this guy. This is what you're going to want to be looking for opportunities to be using your cover. But of course when the plane spotted you it's just the same as a surface ship spotting you and then these ships can target you. And you'll notice the Leon, from what I understand, is not the most accurate ship, but you do have 16 guns, and it's kind of hard to miss <laughs> the 16 guns, even if they are not the most accurate. So, I mean, these every time I see these salvos coming in here, it gets a little, makes me a little queasy. So that's already eliminated half our health, and you know, it, it's very easy to get eliminated very quickly in the ship. You can get one shot for sure. I mean, every time a battleship shoots at you, it's a dangerous situation now. Usually, by the time my guns are firing, I want to be turned and either in the process of turning like I am now. That I just kind of got detected, so I shot and started firing. But you want to be kiting away. 
you can make French jokes if you want, but I mean the sh the ship and these ships in general are designed to be moving away from the enemy. Again, keeping them at max range. It's if you've been watching the map, that's basically what I've been trying to do is keep them pretty much at the edge of my firing range and laying these shells into them. Switching over to AP if that ship's gonna sit there broadside, we're gonna take the shots. Really what you want to do is start one to two fires, especially in the middle section where, it's, where that's where you're kind of wanting to hit a lot of these ships. And once they're on fire, then if you have the AP available, then you can start shooting that because the HE becomes less effective once that fire chance is gone due to the fact that there's already fire um, burning on the ship. So again, if the ship is going to continue to sail broadside of me, we'll just keep shooting the AP now that he's angling in. Quickly switch back, switch back to HE, and that's just kind of the name of the game here. Position-wise, again, max range, but I've kind of identified between this B and C section. It's a lot of wide open water that I can just kind of sail back and forth from. Once the ships are kind of getting out of range on one side or the other, you'll see I'll lock the guns to get them turning, and then just flip the ship around and sail back the other way. And just kind of zigzag back and forth, keep lobbing the shots. You'll notice we're detected now, but... If you're behind friendlies on your team, usually the closer ships are going to get targeted first. Once you start really pissing these people off, they'll start shooting at you. And as soon as we see those shots in the air, just turn away. Again, I would spec this out for mobility with the priority, and that being the pri priority in your mind. You know, getting a little bit more damage per salvo or a little bit faster reload or whatever with an offensive build is fine, but if you die, it's not going to matter. Whereas if you're able to stay alive for the entire length of the match, again, in my mind, how I'm running these is just for the long haul. This is more of a marathon ship in t instead of a sprint type of a ship. So just keep it alive and then just gradually pumping out the damage. That's what you're going to be trying to do with this one. Now as we kind of work on whittling these ships down. We'll just kind of go over the stats a little bit. The Mayoko has the highest health at 39.2. Uh, the Algerie is 35.600, so it's actually the second highest HP at the tier. Armor-wise, you got 110 as the max, which I think because this is armored, it actually starts to become even more brittle, if that makes sense, against battleships, because you're not going to be getting those over pens that you see a lot through the tier you know, three, four, five French cruisers when the battleships are shooting them broadside. All of a sudden, these battleships can start deleting you pretty easily with that additional armor. So you can look at that as a problem or not. I mean, if you angle against cruisers, you can bounce some shells with that. You do have the 203 millimeter guns on this now, same as the Martel at tier 7. So they're a step up, and you do start getting more penetration with the HE and more damage. And you'll see some of these salvos against this New Mexico, especially we're gonna able to pop them. I think we hit 7,001 of those and then some 15, you know, 2,000, 3,000. So the gun is much more effective on this one. Range, I got a 15.3 on my build, so that's gonna be outranged by the New Orleans, the Indianapolis. Other than that, it should extend a little bit further than the other cruisers at this tier. Reload, like I mentioned earlier, a little bit better. I got it at 12 seconds on my build. That's actually second best, excluding the Atlanta, which is obviously an outlier, but the York I got 11.6 on my build, and this is second at 12 seconds. Turret Traverse, really nice, 20.5 on mine. So the gun characteristics are definitely a lot better than they were at the Laga or the earlier ships like the Emily or whatever on the line. You do have torps, you got two sets of three torpedo launchers. They do have 10 kilometer range, 60 knots in the water, when upgraded. But again, we're not trying to be within torpedo range usually. I think this next game, I can't remember if we get torp hits or not, but we're in position to use them. But that's not by design. The next game is a little bit of an outlier, but I did want to show you a different play style that's occasionally viable <laughs> but I don't want you to watch this next game and think okay we can play this ship like a maniac uh, detectability again is a major problem I do have Macau on this build it's still 12 and a half kilometer detectability for surface which is two kilometers more than the 
you know, the New Orleans at 10-3. Uh, the next worst one is the York at 11-7. So detectability, a problem if you're not going to play it at max range. So, I mean, you're going to be sighted before other targets, which means you're going to be taking the first salvos in the game. And you need to be prepared for that by moving away from the ships shooting at you rather than towards them. I got a rudder shift down to Mogami-esque levels. 3.7 on mine. Again, that's with Rue focusing on maneuverability with the double steering gear setup. Highly recommended. You can try it other ways. I'm not saying there's only one way to play the ship, but <laughs> that's the way to play it the longest. A lot of the other setups that you can try, I think you'll get killed very quickly in this one. So again, that was more of a prototypical Elgery build, or Elgery game. Might not be the most exciting playstyle for some people. I mean, the French line's really not all that, you know, sexy of a line until the Martel, which again we'll be taking a look at later. But they are support ships. They're there to harass and whittle down in a marathon-like manner. So next up we do have a match on North. Just briefly continuing with the stats. I do have 4,800 for AP damage, which is... Pretty good for the tier, second highest behind the York. Uh, fire chance, 15%, fairly low. Actually, that is the lowest except for the Atlanta. And the HE damage, 2884. And that's with Rue boosting that with his level 11 HE damage boosting perk. So the HE damage isn't that big. I mean, it's kind of fairly average except for the Myoko. But. The gun's overall pretty serviceable, and again, it requires a pretty good aim for long range. I mean, if you're still kind of learning how to hit targets long range, I've been saying this pretty much every French cruiser video, but I'll say it again. This is not a good starting cruiser line. You probably want to start with, like, the Japanese would be a good friendly beginner line, I think. A little bit more durable. So here on north we're moving into position. Now I do like to use this center island as kind of cover. Usually you can expect the north team to be right on. You can see the spotted there. That's usually where they're going. They're usually angling in towards A. From this position, depending on where the enemy moves, you can actually reach into B and A. So you can kind of dual cover um, different positions. But in this particular game... I'm going to swing around A, try and cover that, and we're trying to turn away. Now this Colorado or whatever the heck this thing is right here kind of inadvertently blocks me. So nothing we can do there, but luckily we're not spotted. We're not under threat, so no harm, no fall. We're just going to let him pass, and then we're going to try and get up to speed quickly and then continue to get into our opening position. King George, fully broadside, we're going to blast him with HE once. And immediately switch over to the AP. And again, you know, whether we got the fire or not doesn't really matter. He does put that fire out, which leads me to switch right back to the HE. Because he burned his damage con, if we can get one, maybe two fires mixed in on the ship, that's a lot of permanent damage. Then we can switch back to the AP if he remains broadside. But you want to be looking for targets that have used their damage con and then try and capitalize on that with either Torp flooding damage or HE fire damage. And that becomes a major problem for them when they cannot fix the issues that you're causing them. So that's a strong play for any class of ship that you're looking for. We do get the fire. We do switch back to AP now. He's continuing to sail broadside. And you can see we're just angling steeply away from him. We're actually flipping around the guns. The, these French cruisers, I I recommend gun lock on all ships. I think it's very helpful for everything, but these ones, because you're going to want to be flipping back and forth quite a bit, that'll help you get those guns into position a lot quicker if you lock them to the rear of the opposite side and then begin your turn. And... You know, you just kind of want to be maximizing your DPM with these ships, because if you're not, if you're not constantly in a position to be dealing damage pretty much on reload, then you're gonna see your results drop off quite a bit. Again, you do have to kind of be in a position to sustain the damage throughout the match. So here we had a destroyer that I was eyeing, but he kind of gets into position to cover. So the New Orleans was 
more or less sitting still. We're going to tap them with the HE just to get them moving. These ships are a lot of times a lot easier to hit when they're going full speed or approaching it. So sometimes you can just kind of give them a tap on the rear to get them moving. That'll make the aiming actually easier. Now he does drop off detection right before we shoot, but because we were kind of pre-aimed in on him, we do land a couple citadels there. And then we flip right back to the HE because we're expecting to shoot that destroyer. And also the New Orleans being low is a prime HE target. Now he's struggling to get off this beach. Uh, his crew was <laughs> couldn't decide if they wanted to abandon ship and jump off on the beach now or go down with the ship. But slowing down like that is a big problem. You can see the HE damage is plentiful by itself and then the fires actually do extinguish that ship's life. So we took one more salvo at him just to make sure, but even if we let him to his own devices, I think the fire would have burned him to the ground anyways. Now watching this back, I'm not sure why I turned to the west here. I think turning to the east would have been probably better. I probably was trying to play it a little safe just because there's a lot of guns further east and we're in a position to be able to shoot at this Akatsuki even though it's a long range shot, but these guns are accurate enough and they're they're a little floaty, you do have to aim them just a little bit further in front of the target than you might expect, but even at range we can hit some of these shots. While we're dealing with this Akatsuki here, I do want to point out the, I think it was the King George that's hugging the bat, or he's hugging the border, going up to the corner of the map. We could have very easily fallen in the trap of chasing him. People that kite away and that drawing people away from the match are either really good or they're really bad. There's <laughs> Very, very seldom are they kind of average players. If he's really bad, he's just crapping his pants and saying, oh, I got shot, I'm going to run away. Why anyone would have any fun doing that, I have no idea. But a lot of really bad players will do that. Or if he's really good, what he's attempting to do is he's taking ships out of the fight by drawing them to an inconsequential, inconsequential location. So... Killing a ship that's sailing away from you is very hard because they're by nature well angled and it's actually easier to aim and shoot at ships that are sailing towards you or chasing you. So the, we talk about kiting all the time on this channel. It's a very strong tactic, but you don't want to fall for it like the people on my team are doing. There might just be the one ship chasing them. Whatever it is, I mean... It's, it's not that consequential of a play this match because we have the situation fairly well in hand down here. But you can very easily lose games, and I see it happen all the time, by chasing after targets that are inconsequential, irrelevant to the outcome. Whether or not that ship dies or not, by the time they're able to kill them, if they are able to kill them, the match is largely going to be decided by what's going on down here. And like I said earlier it's easier to defend kiting away so that ship could has an advantage by the ship chasing them and they could uh, very likely kill the ships that are chasing them so don't fall for that trap and like I said I mean it's it's considered a very strong play but just kinda of poor players accidentally make it just because they're afraid <laughs> so anyway I just want to point that out because there's an opportunity to point that out um, here we do have the York broadside. We're going to splash him with a shot here. That could have very easily been a kill shot, but... Um, weren't able to quite finish him off there, but you can see... I'm not... I guess I'm not turning as hard as I want to be, but looking at that diagram, what I want to be doing is getting my ship angled and in position to shoot the Queen here, the Laga. These are the targets I'm mainly worried about, the York. I was under the assumption I could kill him, and I was able to do that. But what I wanted to do was kind of be angled here, utilize this cover. Hope, you know, I'm trying to get unsighted. Now we finally do drop detection by getting a little bit further behind this island. It's still not, you know, too steep that we can shoot through here. I should actually, I'm going quarter speed, but I should actually throw it into reverse and fully stop. So we kind of overshot our cover a little bit there, which is a bit of a mistake. I do call out B, you can always say, why don't you do it, you lazy <laughs> SOB. But I'm in the position to engage these ships, and I'm relatively confident in my ability to do so with some measure of success. 
Whereas the ships that are trailing to the fight, they can't necessarily shoot at anything yet, but they can get into position, stop the points accruing for the enemy team on B, and then go ahead and flip it. And that's just as important for winning games as killing ships on the enemy team is. You want to be in control of the points on domination by having more objectives than the other team, if possible at all times. You know, obviously it's not going to work out all the time. And here we do get some torps down. Those are mostly harassment torps. Again, they're not bad. You know, they're 10 kilometers for a tier 6. I think that's actually, you know, tied with the Myoko for best range. And 60 knots. I mean, slowest at the tier, but serviceable. But cruiser torps, for me, are normally just distractions. They're means of harassment if they happen to hit something cool, but once they pop up on the enemy's screen, they have to dodge those. That either forces them to miss angle their ship and you can punish them for that, or they just kind of... It, it adds to what's going on. It's kind of information overload for those enemies. So once that beeping goes off, people get a little bit panicky and they're forced to react to it. So if you're in position to use the torps, go ahead and use them. But like I say, usually you don't want to... This is pretty close range for the ship, you know. I'd, it worked out well in this match, and we were kind of in control and in the driver's seat in this match, but I do not recommend being this close very often. So we're just whittling down this queen. Again, we'll throw more torps down here, but... Here's a good example of kiting away. Like, I'm in the advantage here, shooting at that tip of the ship and then just adjusting it left or right, depending on which way he's slightly angled. A lot easier shot than him trying to lead me. I'm flipping back and forth. I'm varying the speeds. I'm making it very hard for this ship to hit me. Now, if he does hit me, he could very well finish me off in one salvo, especially being half health, but even full health. Potentially, you know, these battleships are existential threats to you at all times. But because I have the ship specced out for maneuverability and I'm actively using it, I'm comfortable with that situation. And we are able to wear him down for our fourth kill. Now, you always want to be saying when you got a destroyer in the area, am I detected, am I not detected? This is giving me information. For sure, he's within my blue circle because that's my detectability range and he's obviously not behind these islands so i'm suspecting i kept firing kind of torps at that smoke thinking he would be coming at a straight line following me typical player behavior and we'll just put another salvo down right there again do i have him sighted do i have any idea where he is no but i'm just kind of playing the odds the odds are slightly better that he's going to be following a straight line from where he was to where i was a moment ago and we're just going to clutter up that area, you know, with these torps. So, but again, detected, detected. Keep an eye on that the entire time. That's very valuable information. Now, he does pop up on the map, and he wound up being way over there. So the torps, inconsequential, but good idea to get him down. And if, if you haven't noticed, the torp firing angles on the ship are very nice. You can get steep salvos off uh, very quickly. But the Mayhem's, you know, in a pickle now, and we're able to blast them down for the Kraken. So again, that's a little bit more brawly, a little bit more close range than I would typically recommend playing this one, but I thought it was a kind of interesting game anyways. So, hope you did enjoy the look at the Algeri. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, you should consider subscribing. There's a lot of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave below. I'd love to hear from you guys, and we'll see you all later. Alright, peace!